Welcome to the CompTIA 220 1101 or Core 1 exam. This is Objective 2.3, Wireless Networking Technologies. If you're using an 802.11 network, there are a number of technical specifications that you need to be aware of. One is the frequency in use. You may have already seen the 802.11 standards video that there are many standards that use the 802.4 gigahertz range and other standards that use the 5 gigahertz range. And some of them use both of these ranges to be able to communicate. You also have to keep in mind that there are separate channels within those frequency ranges that can be used. These are groups of frequencies and the IEEE has assigned numbers to these frequencies so that we can much easier refer to which channel we happen to be using. That's why we often say if you're using multiple access points in a particular area, you may want to make sure each of these access points is running on a separate wireless channel. And depending on where you are in the world, there's probably a governmental agency that's responsible for managing the wireless spectrum or those frequencies that you would use for these 802.11 networks. These regulations often dictate exactly which frequencies should be used. They'll specify the maximum amount of power that can be used on those networks, and they'll set requirements and limits over how much interference can be caused by these 802.11 networks. We often see the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz networks compared with 802.11 but I thought it'd be nice to see a visual representation of why 5 gigahertz networks are so popular. These are the only channels available in 2.4 gigahertz. As you can see, there are three to choose from. And if you're in an apartment complex with many, many 802.11 wireless networks, you'll easily find a lot of activity on all three of those channels. That's because of this limitation. So we started using the 5 gigahertz spectrum. Everything that is on the 5 gigahertz list that is not red can be used to communicate. So you can see there are many more 20 megahertz channels available on 5 gigahertz spectrum than there were on the 2.4 gigahertz. This allows you to easily find some available spectrum in your area, especially if there are a lot of access points being used simultaneously. You may be using larger bandwidth than 20 megahertz to communicate because you can get much higher throughput that way. So it may not be 20 megahertz channels that you're choosing. It may be 40 megahertz bandwidth or 80 megahertz or 160 megahertz of bandwidth. You can see that when you get to 160 megahertz that there are really two separate non-contiguous areas available to be able to communicate at such a large bandwidth. Not only do we often see these 802.11 wireless networks, we also extensively use Bluetooth networks. This effectively removes the wires from our peripherals that we connect to our mobile devices. So if you're using a handset, if you have a set of external speakers or you have an external keyboard that you use on your computer, it's probably using Bluetooth to communicate. Bluetooth also uses the 2.4 gigahertz band. The part of the 2.4 gigahertz it uses is the unlicensed ISM part of the band that stands for industrial, scientific, and medical. This is an area of the 2.4 gigahertz band that doesn't require you to get any special licensing from the government. Anyone can use this particular frequencies. And that's why the Bluetooth and 802.11 commonly use the 2.4 gigahertz band. Bluetooth devices generally only communicate in small areas around you. We often refer this as a personal area network. And we're at the end of the wireless networking technologies. Okay, here's a question about spectrums. What IE AAA channel is not available on the five gigahertz spectrum? 36 to 64, A. 68 to 96, B. 100 to 128, C. Or 132 to 144, D. And the answer is 68 to 96. That's um, a red area. It's not available at all. Thanks for watching.